Hey there, and welcome to another weekly real estate news recap here on Bald Prairie Real Estate. My name is Matthew Fife from Real Estate in Regina, and that is my trusted assistant, Matilda. Royal LePage just revised their 2023 Canadian housing market forecast, and it might change your mind whether you think that you should buy a house this year or not in Canada. Now, if you are thinking about buying a house and you already have a fantastic real estate agent, in the description of this video, right below here, there's going to be a link to my calendar where you can book me in for a buyer's consultation, and I will phone you and get you set up with the absolute perfect agent for you in your market. But as we always do, let's start off with another terrible joke. The Egyptians say there are no crocodiles in Egypt. Personally, I think they're in denial. If you have a terrible joke that I can use in a future episode, put it in the comments below. Let's get into the news. This week's first news article is from RBC. It's a report out that they're projecting that Canada will face a shortage of 120,000 purpose-built rentals by 2026 if we don't see the pace of that purpose-built rental construction increase. So actually last year we saw a 2.4% increase in the purpose-built rental stock. That was the largest increase in almost a decade. Even still, RBC says there's about a 20 to 30,000 purpose-built rental shortage today, and that is going to increase. They're saying we need about 350,000 purpose-built rentals to be built before 2026, and our current pace will see that short by about 120,000. Now, the big boom we saw at least last year in terms of that increase in purpose-built rentals was not even across the country. Calgary and Ottawa saw the largest increase in the rental stock, while Toronto and Montreal saw the smallest. Now, if you're looking to rent in Toronto, you know how much rent has gone up and how hard it is to find a quality rental in that city. So that's one city we definitely need to see more rentals. But as I've been saying for a long time on this channel, we need to see more homes built in Canada. That's purpose-built rentals and homes for people to buy as owner-occupied properties. In this week's episode of Real Estate Agents Misbehaving, this comes from my hometown in Regina, where a Regina real estate agent was fined $4,000 for a social media post. Now, I'll link the article in the description below, as with all of these new articles, so you can read all the details of exactly what happened. But essentially, the real estate agent had a deal go sideways and they started posting on social media about the real estate agent on the other side and in this case, the buyers. Come on, man. That's what this is. You know you can't do these types of things and it cost this agent $4,000. We have a code of ethics and things that we can and can't do as real estate agents and one of them is talking poorly about other agents and the clients. You just can't do that type of stuff. So this was a case of getting fined $4,000 for saying something stupid that you shouldn't have said in the first place. Now let's talk about mortgage arrears or mortgage delinquencies. This is something that I like keeping you guys up to date about and we got a new month's worth of stats to look at. Now for those that don't know, mortgage delinquency, mortgage arrears is people that are behind on the mortgage payments. Typically it's 90 days or more behind and that will get reported. That is of course a leading indicator. Somebody's not paying their mortgage on time if they're behind on it. The next step is going to be foreclosure or power of sale for sales. So keeping an eye on that is going to give you an idea what's coming down the pipe basically for those foreclosures, distress sales. And that of course typically leads to downward pressure on prices. Now we started this year at 0.14%. That is historically low. Pre-pandemic, which was already very low, we were about 0.3%. Now we've gone from 0.14 to 0.15 to 0.16. Seeing this increase shouldn't surprise anybody, but obviously that is still really, really low. And that represents 7,900 total mortgages in Canada. There's about 5.1 million total mortgages in Canada. So we're still talking about really small numbers. To put it in some context, during the 2008 housing crisis, their mortgage delinquency rate for variable rate mortgages peaked at 35%. We're 0.14%, sorry, 0.16, that's gone up. Even in the fixed rate category in the United States, that was somewhere around 6 to 8% in that 2008 housing crisis. Even today, the United States typically sees delinquency rates around 2 to 5%. Again, we're 0.16% in Canada. 
Of course, the biggest news this week was probably the Bank of Canada's interest rate announcement. And as essentially everybody expected, the Bank of Canada did not raise interest rates. I put a poll out on this about a week ago and 59% of you said they're not gonna raise interest rates. So congratulations, you guys got that one rate. I put these up about a week before each one of these rate announcements and we have some fun to see where people are placing their bets on what's going to happen. But again, the Bank of Canada had been really telegraphing that this was what was gonna happen. Now, if you read the press release or watched the press conference, they basically came out and said, and they essentially held the stick up in the air and said, don't be silly guys, we might raise interest rates. That's the Bank of Canada trying to scare the crap out of you guys, saying, don't be silly, don't go let inflation get out of control by spending a whole pile of money. And hopefully the government doesn't dump a whole bunch of money into the economy at the same time, because if we see inflation continue to trend down, the Bank of Canada will have the motive to start reducing rates. Whether that is later this year or next year, at the trend we're going, that's what's going to happen. Now, if you look at inflation, you'll see the year-over-year -year number is about 5.2%. That was the last month's stats and it's continued to trend down. But if you want to have a little bit of fun, go look since about September, the month-to-month -month change. Add that all up and annualize it and you will see that we are on pace right now for about 25 to 3% inflation by the time we get into the fall this year. That's exactly what the Bank of Canada is looking for because they'd like it closer to two than they would 3%, but we are on pace for that right now, barring something change this trend. So this is good news, inflation coming down, meaning the Bank of Canada is likely going to be starting to think about dropping rates. Again, probably the back half of this year or into next year. Now we've come to Royal LePage's revised forecast for the Canadian real estate market for 2023. Quick little trip down memory lane. They started the year with a forecast saying that year over year, by the end of the year, so by the time we hit the December 2023, they projected the prices will be down about 1% from December 2022. They've now revised that forecast to say that prices will be up 4.5% December 2023 versus December 2022. Now, first off, please don't base your decision to buy a house based on a projection being right. Because at the end of the day, these forecasts should be considered entertainment. If your plan requires a forecast to go right, it's probably not a good plan. And just like we saw last year where every bank and real estate company revised their forecast multiple times over as the information started to change, and they should do so, don't be surprised if we see the same this year. I would not be shocked if we start seeing banks and other real estate companies revising their outlook for the Canadian housing market for 2023, because we've seen a much stronger spring than pretty much everybody expected, myself included. I didn't think we'd see prices increasing already at this time this year, but we are. We've seen two months in a row of price increases. Honestly, I thought we wouldn't see price increases till that May or June timeframe, and we're obviously seeing it February, March so far this year. A huge part has been driven by the lack of inventory. We've talked about that at nauseam in my monthly Canadian real estate market updates. So again, that's a huge problem we have in our housing market right now. Now, when Royal LePage talks about pricing, they're basing their benchmark price on RPS. That is the Real Property Solutions benchmark price, not the Canadian Real Estate Association's benchmark price. That's what I use on my monthly Canadian real estate market updates. Their methodology is a little bit different. They show a price drop of about 10% peak to trough, whereas the Canadian Real Estate Association shows it at about 17%. Again, a whole bunch of jargon I've thrown at you, a bunch of numbers. Really what matters to you is what direction are prices going? Everybody projected prices to be down year over year. Now we're starting, at least we've seen the first projection to see prices increasing. And I think is based on the fact that we've seen a much more stronger market than we expected. And now the Bank of Canada seems that they want to hold interest rates with the possibility that interest rates drop later on this year. That's put a lot of confidence back in the real estate market in Canada. Yes, you heard me say that right. Home prices in Canada have increased two months in a row. If you want to learn more what's going on, that is my most recent monthly Canadian real estate market update. So check that out. Got a whole bunch of updates on 11 major markets in Canada. If you thought this video was great, please give this video a like. Subscribe to Bald Prairie Real Estate if you love learning about real estate. Leave me a comment below so I can chat with you guys in the comment section. And as always, thanks very much for watching.